separate object is submerged into the fluid it will you can say trans it will um, replace some volume of the water so the uh, buoyancy will be or buoyancy force will be the will be equivalent to the weight of the water or the weight of the liquid displaced by the solid body that that force will be equal to the weight of the uh, liquid displaced by that uh, solid body so that is called as buoyancy forces it usually acts act upwards so that we had discussed uh, basically the formula for buoyancy forces will be the weight of the water displaced and weight you know it is a density into volume into g so it will be density of the fluid into volume of the fluid displaced into g so that was the buoyancy force we had discussed and uh, then we have discussed about uh, uh, center of buoyancy also that what is center of buoyancy center of buoyancy is basically a point uh, through which about which we will assume that the net buoyancy forces are taking place okay or uh, that was also considered as a centroid of the body which is inside the water let's say if i have a block so out of uh, if the block is floating a part of block will be inside water and a part of block will be outside of the water so centroid of the block which is inside of the water that will be the center of buoyancy we had discussed then we discussed about uh, meta center i have told you that meta center is the point about which a floating body may oscillate okay so a floating body may oscillate about a point that point is called as uh, meta center or uh, technical definition of meta center i have told you is whenever the uh, line of action of buoyancy forces meets with uh, the line uh, meets, meets with the normal axis of the body so whenever the line of action of buoyancy forces meets with the uh, normal axis of the body that intersection point is called as meta center okay and meta center if the meta center is positive we will assume that uh, the body is stable the floating body is stable that is what we discussed uh, in the last class then we derived an expression for the uh, meta centric height that was i by v I by minus bg so i was the moment of inertia v was the volume of the water displaced and uh, minus bg bg is the uh, distance between center of buoyancy and center of gravity so that we had discussed and we solved a couple of questions also based on buoyancy and meta centric height Uh, today uh, we are going to discuss about the last topic of unit one that will be the stability of uh, floating and submerged bodies. Now, if you if you have a body which is either floating or submerged, we will see whether that body will be stable or not. Why we need to check stability of the submerged or the floating body inside the water because there are many applications which are uh, which are you can say devised or developed or invented uh, to uh, you can say to operate underwater or on the water. and like in case of ships or submarines so we need to uh, check the stability of those uh, um, those uh, units uh, on the water or inside the water fine so therefore we need to check whether if we if there is a bo- floating body or a submerged body whether it will be stable or not or what are the conditions that that body will remain stable or it, in wo- in what condition it gets unstable so that we need to study here when one i came to class ha man don't worry i have marked you present okay so moving on to the today's lecture content uh, as the first topic uh, first topic of uh, today's content will be the stability of the floating uh, body or the stability of the submerged body so there are two parts of this lecture in the first part we will discuss about the stability of the floating body and in the second part we will discuss about the stability of submerged bodies fine but before that i want to explain that what is stability what is unstability so to explain the stability and unstability we have this example over here right this has nothing to do with the fluid mechanics just to explain the term stability and unstability we have this example here fine let's say i have this ball okay now if when this ball is placed in such a curvature okay now if this ball is placed in such a curvature now assume a condition when you push the this ball to any side okay if you push this ball to any side what will happen ultimately this ball will come to this original position this is let's say this is a neutral position so if you keep this ball over here and if you drop it so after some uh, you can say oscillation it will come back to its this position fine so i can say this kind of position or this kind of condition is called as a stable condition because whatever you do with this ball it will ultimately come back to its normal stable condition so that is called as stability fine now when i come to discuss about the second case in the second case what will happen if i push that ball if i push, if i push that ball to some side let's say if i keep this if i lift the ball from here to if i put it here over here so this ball will remain here only it will not move anywhere fine if i hold that ball if i keep that ball from here to this position so this ball will acquire this new position so what i want i mean to say is whatever you do with this uh, this ball if you change the location of this ball that ball will remain at that new location it will not move here and there fine so such type of condition is called as neutral stability fine this is called as stability is that uh, yes any doubts 
Okay. So in the first case, what we were doing, we, you do anything with this uh, per condition, the ball will come back to its original stable condition. So that is called a stability. Right? In the second condition, if you move this, if, the, if you change the location of this ball, this ball will remain stable at the new location. It will not try to come back to its original location, but it will try to remain it in its new location. Fine. So that, such type of stability is called as neutral stability. Fine. Now the third case, third case, what will happen? In third case, what will happen in this case, if I change the location, if I change the position even slightly, if you do a very slight movement to this condition, what will happen? This ball will never come back to its uh, original position and it will keep on rolling down the, you can say curvature. Right? So in this case, this ball, uh, ball will become unstable if you even push this ball by a very small amount of force. Right? So such kind of, such kind of condition is called as unstability. Right? So if I need to discuss this term stability, there could be three types of condition. In one condition, whatever you do with this ball, this ball will try to come back to its original position. So that is called a stability. Right? In second case, uh, what will happen if you change the location? If you change the location of this ball, it will try to remain stable in the new location. It will not try to come back to its original location, but it will, it, but it will try to stay there in the new location. So this is called as neutral stability. And in this condition, ball will never try to get stable. The ball, ball will keep start keep rolling uh, through the curvature. Right? So this ball will keep on rolling through the curvature. So this ball will remain unstable. So this is the condition of unstability. So if it is clear, keep this point in your mind and then we'll try to discuss the stability of floating bodies and the submerged bodies. Any doubt on this slide? Anyone? No, sir. Okay. So if you are clear about the term stability and uh, neutral, stable and unstable, we'll try to discuss uh, these terms with reference to the uh, sub stability of submerged bodies first. Let's take the first uh, topic. In the first topic, we'll try to discuss about the stability of the submerged bodies. Right? Submerged bodies, you should be clear about the meaning of the submerged body. Submerged body means this body is completely inside the liquid. If I assume a liquid tank, this body, this is a randomly shaped body. This body is completely inside the liquid. Right? So when this com uh, when this body is completely inside the liquid or liquid, I'm just, just telling liquid, it could be fluid, it could be gas, all the, uh, gases also. But uh, I have told you in the very first lecture that buoyancy forces are very, uh, you can say very less, are less significant in the gases. There are buoyancy forces in the, uh, in the gases also, but that is not significant. Okay, you, you hardly observe that those forces in the gases. Therefore, I am uh, continuously giving examples of the liquid, right? So what I'm saying is the, this body is completely submerged, completely inside the liquid. Now, when this body is completely inside the liquid, this body can have two points, center of buoyancy and center of gravity, right? See, see B is the center of buoyancy and G is the center of gravity. Now, you could have a doubt that why center of buoyancy is up and why center of gravity is down. Like if you remember center of pressure, I have told you that center of pressure should be below center of gravity, but I have never told you that center of buoyancy should be up or center of gravity should be up. Right. So th this is right now for the experimentation purpose, what we have assumed that the center of buoyancy is, uh, let's say if the center of buoyancy is, uh, you can say above and center of gravity is below, why it is below, you can see extra weight is added to the body. This extra weight is added to the body at the bottom. If the extra weight is added to the body at the bottom, what will happen? There will be more weight at the bottom. And if there is more weight at the bottom, center of gravity will shift to the bottom side. So therefore center of gravity is down and center of buoyancy is up okay now when this uh, this case is happening in this case what will happen if you give it an angular if this if uh, for this body if you give it an angular displacement if you tilt it slightly see in this case it has been tilted slightly so what has happened see center of this is center of buoyancy and this is center of gravity and you know from center of buoyancy buoyant bi forces will act, will be acting upwards and from center of gravity weight of the body will be acting downwards right so what is happening in this case okay you can easily guess that this was the applied torque in this direction. I can say in the clockwise direction, but these two forces, one is the upward force, one is a downward force. These, there, are, uh, there are opposite forces. These are opposite forces. So these opposite forces are also making a, a couple, fine. That too in the anti-clockwise direction, fine. So applied force is a clockwise direction. Applied couple is a clockwise direction. And uh, you can say the generated couple due to this condition, generated couple is anti-clockwise direction, fine. So what this couple will try to do, this couple will try to rotate this body into its normal condition again. Okay, like the, like the same case we discussed in this case, in case of ball. If you push this ball to any side, it will again try to come back to its original condition. So same is happening here also. 
though you have applied the couple in this direction though you have tilted the body in this direction but due to these forces this body will try to uh, come back to its original condition that is this condition fine so such type of condition is called as stability okay or i i can also can call it as stable equilibrium fine so this is a condition for stable equilibrium so for stable equilibrium what can i say that the center of gravity should should always lies below the center of buoyancy okay now this is a point you can note it down somewhere also or it it may have been written in these points also that for a stable equilibrium in a submerged body in case of a submerged body i am talking about this could be different uh, for the floating body but in case of submerged body the center of gravity should be below center of buoyancy for stable equilibrium this point should be clear to you and why it, why it is happening we have discussed with the help of couples also this couple has generated because of this condition this generated couple is also called as restoring torque okay what what do we call this couple which is generated this couple is called as restoring torque okay let me write it properly okay you can write it i have to, i don't have uh, like options to write it let's see if i can okay yes this couple will be called as restoring okay so couple generated in this condition is called as restoring torque why it is restoring torque because the applied force is clockwise but the generated couple is anti clockwise and due to this generated couple this body will try to uh, get its original condition fine so therefore this couple which is generated over here it is also called as restoring torque now mind it this could be an objective question also in your uh, exam like uh, why what is the reason of stable equilibrium in case of submerged body so you can say it is restoring torque okay so in now second case is unstable equilibrium now if i talk about unstable equilibrium in this case see what we have done we have put the additional weight at the top of the body if you put the additional weight at the top of the body what will happen center of gravity will move up fine like in this case the additional weight was downward so center of gravity was down in this case additional weight is upward so the center of gra gravity will move up okay that means in this case center of buoyancy is down and center of gravity is up now what will happen to this body if you tilt this body when i tilted tilted this body what happened uh let's see center of this is the center of gravity so the weight will be acting downward through the center of gravity and uh, the force of buoyancy will be acting upward through the center of buoyancy now again you can see these are the opposite forces so this these forces are also making couple but what will be the direction of that couple you can see this force is the direction of the couple will be anti clockwise okay so what is happening applied couple is also sorry not anti clockwise applied couple was also clockwise and direction of this couple generated couple is also clockwise so what has happened if you tilt this body this body will keep on rolling this body will keep on rolling because both the couples are in the same direction okay so this body will keep on rolling in the clockwise direction so this is a case of unstable because this body will not try to regain its original condition it will keep on rolling fine right? just like in the uh, in the previous slide we discussed this thing unstable condition of the unstability you can see in this case if you push this uh, ball even a slight uh, by a slight force what will happen this ball will keep on rolling right so similarly also this case also when you uh, tilt this body even a slight uh, tilt is given to this body this body will keep on rolling because both the couples or both the couples are in the same direction okay so this is a condition of unstability so for a submerged body if the center of gravity is above center of buoyancy the body will remain unstable okay now third case is if the center of buoyancy and center of gravity coincides at the same point that means both center of buoyancy and center of gravity is at the same point what will happen in that case in that case both the forces are balanced see uh, the upward force is also acting through center of buoyancy like if i try to draw so fb uh, force of buoyancy will be upward and the weight of this body will be downward fine so net force on this body will be balanced so since there is no difference there is no difference between the uh, weight or there is no uh, distance perpendicular distance between these two forces so there are these forces are acting uh, opposite to each other but since there is no gap there is no distance between these two forces so there will be zero couple couple here will be rotating couple will be zero so if you rotate this body if you rotate this body this body will try to remain in that root 
in that tilted condition because there is no restoring couple there is no uh, you can say overturning couple this couple is called as overturning couple okay this is called as over turning couple overturning couple this was called as restoring couple this is called as overturning couple but why because the generated couple is also turning this body fine so this is called as overturning couple this is restoring couple but in this case there is no neither the overturning couple there is no uh, restoring couple so this body will try to remain in the new condition if you tilt this body this body will try to remain in the tilted condition fine so that is what uh, this condition is called as neutral equilibrium you can compare the same condition with this uh, b portion if you put this ball to any new location it, that ball will remain in the new location it will not try to come back to its original condition neither it will try to move away to any other condition fine it will try to remain in the uh, changed location fine so that is called as neutral equilibrium fine so this is a neutral equilibrium so in case of a submerged body you just need to remember uh, to a few things like uh, for a stable condition center of gravity should be below center of buoyancy because in that case restoring torque generate and this body will try to regain its original condition for case of unstable equilibrium center of buoyancy will be below center of gravity so in that case the body will keep on turning because of the over generation of overturning couple fine and the neutral equilibrium when the center of buoyancy and center of gravity will be at the same point so there will be no couple generated in this body and this body will try to remain in its in its uh, condition but whatever the condition given to it given to this body fine so that is the stability of the submerged body and you won't believe there are uh, many number of questions objective questions can be framed from the, uh, from these three images okay? so you need to remember these three images am i clear yes sir okay so if it is clear let us yes, try yes. let us try to move to the next slide so next slide will be the stability of submerged body previous was the state uh, okay still lost still there it is the same point have been discussed over in this slide also you can read that fine so for stable equilibrium b should be above g fine so that in that case it will be a stable equilibrium for unstable equilibrium b should be below g fine so that is the unstable equilibrium and neutral equilibrium b and g should be at the same point fine so that is what have been discussed on this slide also now the next topic which we need to study is stability of the floating body now stability of the floating body like a, a ship a ship is floating over a surface of the liquid fine so we need to find what what will be the condition in what condition that ship will be uh, stable fine because we do, i don't want the ship to overturn okay otherwise what will happen all the passengers all the goods okay all the structure of the ship will be damaged if the ship will overturn fine so in that case stability of the floating body is very critical and you need to understand under what conditions the floating body will remain stable in, uh, on a liquid fine so if i need to discuss uh, for discussing stability of the floating body meta center plays a important role i have told you in the last class also that uh, there is a significance of meta center we'll discuss in the in the next class so meta center plays a important role in the stability of the floating body how it uh, plays the important role because you can read this line also the stability of the floating body is determined from the position of the meta center okay so so what will be the condition in what condition body will remain stable let's try to see the first case is stable equilibrium so when the stability will be achieved like in this case initially let's say this is the case in which uh, the center of buoyancy is below center of gravity now it is very much clear it is very much clear that uh, for a floating body for a floating body mostly the center of buoyancy will remain center of gravity will remain below center of gravity why why because this body is partly inside the water and uh, partly outside the water fine so whenever this body is partly inside the water only half of this half of this will be the center of buoyancy half of the submerged portion will be center of buoyancy so obviously center of buoyancy will be below and center of gravity will be half of the total height fine so center of gravity will always remain uh, above the center of buoyancy in case of floating body okay you can see the logic also logic will be center of gravity will be half of the total height okay this will be g but center of buoyancy is half of the submerged height only fine so some half of the submerged height will be below the center of gravity fine so whatever the condition whatever the stable unstable or neutral equilibrium center of buoyancy will always remain center of gravity so there is no confusion uh, regarding this point in the floating bodies so in floating bodies always center of buoyancy will remain below the center of gravity now it uh, stability depends upon the location of the meta center okay now if you tilt this body let's say if you tilt this body what will happen the center of buoyancy will be shifted i have told you why the center of buoyancy will be shifted what can anyone tell me the reason why the center of buoyancy has shifted if you tilted this body why the center of buoyancy has shifted can anyone answer this question
Yes, Basam. Basam Muhammad. Are you there? The center of Mars shift to a slash answer. Okay. Anyone could answer this question. Why the center of buoyancy has shifted to this condition if I have tilted the body? So it's called matter center change over here. Meta center की तो भी बात नहीं कर रहे meta center तो बाद में निकलेगा see what will happen again I have told you see if you remember if you tilt this body if you tilt this body to the right side let's say this is the right side so uh, on the right side a large portion of the body will be inside water from the right side and less portion will be inside the water from the left side right left side and left side there will be lesser um, lesser portion of the body which is inside the water but on the right side a more portion a major portion of this body is inside water. Now you know what is center of buoyancy. Center of buoyancy is the centroid of the part which is inside the water. Now, for this case, in this case, centroid will be shifted towards the right side because the major portion of this body on the right side is inside water, fine. Right? So the centroid should be shifted towards the right side because this portion, this right portion, is displacing more amount of water as compared to the left portion. Right? So the center of buoyancy will shift because you remember the uh, definition of center of buoyancy. Center of buoyancy is the centroid of the submerged part okay now the, since i am by due to tilting submerged part is more on the right side so therefore the buoyancy will shift towards the right side it is as simple as possible so the center of buoyancy is the centroid of the submerged part and you when you tilt this body when you are tilting this body to the to the right side what is happening the cent, uh, the centroid is shifted towards the right side because more portion is available on the right side okay so centroid will change fine so due to the shifting of this buoyancy point, what will happen? This is now the new point of buoyancy. And you know the weight is acting through the center of gravity. The weight of this body is acting through the center of gravity. And buoyancy forces are acting towards the center of buoyancy. Okay. And you know the definition of, definition of meta center is the line of action of buoyancy force. This is the line of action of buoyancy force, this red line. And line of action of the neutral axis. This is the neutral axis of the body. Fine. So wherever they are intersecting, this point is called as meta center. This point is called as meta center. Okay. Now, if the meta center, if the meta center is above G, okay, if the meta center is above G, okay, whenever the meta center is above G, we call it as a positive meta center. Fine. So whenever the meta center is above G or the whenever the meta centric height is positive, fine. There are two two ways to say this thing. Either the meta center is above G or the meta centric height is positive. Fine. So in that case, it will be a stable equilibrium. Why it is a stable equilibrium? Again, you can see these are the opposite forces. Force of buoyancy is acting upwards. Weight is acting downward. Okay, so a couple will be formed due to, due to these forces. And that couple will be in which direction? In the anti-clockwise direction. And you can say applied torque is in the clockwise direction. Fine, so it will try to resist the applied torque. This, these forces will try to resist the tilting. Fine, and they will keep the uh, they will take the boat to the they will keep the body into the its original condition again fine so this is the condition for stability okay and for stability what i am saying is for the stability of the floating body meta center should be above the center of gravity or the meta centric height should be positive okay so that is the one condition the condition for the stable equilibrium okay it, it must be written over here also somewhere if the m is above g okay if the m is above g i can say the floating body will be in the stable equilibrium why it is in the stable equilibrium because of this restoring couple okay this is called as restoring couple we discussed this in the next previous slide also right now in case of unstable equilibrium in case of unstable equilibrium you can see the metacentric height is see the point of metacenter i can say the metacenter is below g now if the metacenter is below g what is happening see the weight is acting through the center of gravity this is weight and this is buoyancy forces okay now force up down this is the downward, downward force this is the upward force so in this case the couple will be in the same direction as the generated couple will be in the same direction as the applied couple fine so since both the couples are in the same direction they will try to overturn they will try to overturn this body and this body will try to uh, uh, will uh, this body will try to uh, rotate uh, in 360 degree angle fine so this is called as overturning couple or in this case the body is not stable okay so floating bodies I try to assume a boat which is having this condition so that boat will overturn upside down fine so that is not unstable that is not desirable also so in case of uh, you can say floating bodies we always try to keep meta center above g or meta centric height to be positive in this case meta centric height will be negative fine when the meta center is below g so this is case of unstable equilibrium 
and last is neutral equilibrium also we do not design boats uh, using neutral equilibrium also because in neutral equilibrium if the boat is tilted it will remain tilted fine so you don't want to be want to, you don't want to travel on a tilted boat fine so again the neutral equilibrium is also not desirable for the floating bodies but what is the condition of neutral equilibrium that the meta center should be at the point of center of gravity if the meta center and center of gravity becomes same they coincide fine in that case this is the condition of neutral equilibrium so in that case since there will be no generated couple so the boat will uh, remain in the tilted condition it will not come back it will not overturn it will remain in the tilted condition which is also not desirable for the floating body am i clear Okay. So again, if I need to yeah. summarize, um, again if I need to summarize this whole slide, what I will say that uh, for a floating body to be in the stable equilibrium, meta centric height should be above G. Sorry, meta center should be above G, and meta centric height should be positive, because then only there will be a restoring torque acting on the body, and the body will come back to the neutral condition. Fine. Uh, in second case, if the meta center is below G. below the center of gravity or if the meta centric height is negative there will be a generation of the overturning couple so this body will never come back to its original condition other uh, instead it will uh, keep on overturning it will keep on rotating fine which is unstable for a floating body fine so this is a unstable equilibrium condition third is uh, neutral equilibrium so in that case meta center and center of gravity should be coinciding should be on the same point so in that case there will be no couple generation and if you tilt that floating body in a particular at a particular angle so that body will remain tilted at that particular angle only until and uh, unless you are uh, applying some other torque fine so that is the condition for neutral neutral equilibrium okay am i clear or any doubts are there so clear okay so in this unit 1 uh, this was the last topic we needed to discuss so let me summarize the whole unit 1 what topics we had discussed and and what are important fine we started with the introduction of the fluid mechanics um, what i have told you that what is the meaning of fluid mechanics how it is different from mechanics what are the application areas of fluid mechanics that we had discussed and later on uh, later on we discussed about the properties of the fluids we have di uh, discussed the various uh, properties of the fluids uh, whether those properties were uh, you can say ex uh, extensive properties or intensive properties we have discussed the importance of all those properties we solved uh, some numericals like properties like uh, mass density weight density specific volume specific gravity surface tension capillarity vapor pressure cavitation so all of these properties we had discussed uh, in very detail and then uh, we discussed about after uh, properties of the fluid we discussed about pressure i have told you what is pressure what are the units of pressure then we discussed about different types of pressure like absolute pressure gauge pressure vacuum pressure we discussed about them okay then we discussed about uh, pressure measuring devices like manometers so on manometers we discussed about simple manometer differential manometer and inverted differential uh, manometer so we try to solve some pro problems also in basically in manometers i have told you just that you just need to balance the pressure on the left column and the right column so from that you can easily find the pressure or the pressure difference okay uh, in the in the next lecture uh, we try to discuss about uh, the fluid static uh, fluid statics by with the help of pascal law and hydrostatic law we discussed uh, hydrostatics like uh, pascal law i told you that pascal law states that for a static fluid the intensity of pressure from different directions at a point is same Right. So th that is used for many uh, hydraulic machineries like hydraulic lift, hydraulic press, hydraulic press, hydraulic ram. So all these uh, hydraulic machineries works on the principle of Pascal law. And then we discussed about hydrostatic law, where we uh, we have seen there there was an important uh, expression we have found and we solved many uh, problems using hydrostatic law. That was P is equals to rho g h. And the statement of hydrostatic law was the rate of pressure rise in the vertical direction will be equal to, uh, will be equal to the specific weight density. A specific weight or weight density of the body that is what the statement says by right? hydrostatic law then we discuss about hydrostatic forces on the uh, on the submerged bodies fine right? so there we uh, discuss about two terms total pressure and center of pressure we try to solve some uh, problems based on these uh, 